A humanitarian worker from Denmark went on a rescue operation on the streets of Nigeria in late January 2016, where he came across a malnourished boy who was on the verge of death. Thankfully, a poignant photograph of the event was recorded showing her gently tilting a water bottle near the weak small boy's lips. Years later, the same starved child is back in school after making a full recovery. A reconstruction of his original photograph demonstrates just how far he's come since that time. Anja Ringren Lovin works for a non-profit organization called Dinjflip, your relief in Swedish, which was responsible for locating the abandoned boy who was appropriately named Hope. They rescue youngsters who have been classified as witches and who are frequently tortured and killed by their own impoverished families. Some religious leaders in Nigeria falsely accuse children of witchcraft in order to charge poor families for alleged exorcism services, an epidemic that Anja and her team combat by providing shelter to children who have been victimized by the witch hunt. A heartbreaking photo of a boy, age three, who was left to die after being accused of being a witch was taken on his first day of school, 12 months after he was saved. It was shared on social media. A year after being discovered walking the streets nude, famished and dehydrated, a Nigerian youngster has made an incredible recovery. One year after being saved, a three-year-old Nigerian child who was found famished and suffering from worms after his family abandoned him has been photographed on his first day of school, just one year after being rescued. Anja Ringren Lovin, a Danish philanthropist, intervened to save the boy after his family abandoned him over suspicions that he was a witch in January of last year. For eight months, he lived on the streets, subsisting on leftover scraps thrown by passing motorists. The photo was posted by Miss Lovin, who's lived in Nigeria for several years and who shared a poignant photo of Hope's first day of school after he made a miraculous recovery in just one year. Miss Lovin took to Facebook to share the new images of Hope on his way to school, which she'd taken herself. She can be seen giving him water, which creates a striking contrast between his current state of well-being and how the youngster seemed on the day she rescued him from the squalor. On the 30th of January, 2016, I went on a rescue operation with David Emmanuel Umem, Nasidi Orak, and the rest of our Nigerian crew, she wrote beside the photo. Hope was introduced to the world through a rescue mission that went viral, and today marks exactly one year since the world became acquainted with him. Hope will begin school the following week. Hope was transported to the hospital after being discovered wandering the streets by Miss Lovin, where he was treated with medication to get rid of the worms in his stomach, as well as frequent blood transfusion to help his body absorb more red blood cells. According to reports, Miss Lovin, who operates an orphanage in Nigeria, was able to raise over 790,000 pounds from donations all over the world to assist in the treatment of Hope after she came across him. She's now been recognized as one of the world's most important individuals as a result of her efforts to assist abandoned children who were falsely accused of being witches in Nigeria's Akwa Ibom state, where she grew up. In some African cultures, the belief in witchcraft is so widespread that children who are suspected of practicing it have little chance of leading a regular life. These people are abandoned and they're subjected to horrible exorcisms and fasting in the hopes that the harsh measures would drive the demon from their bodies. Miss Lovin is the creator of the African Children's Aid, Education, and Development Foundation, which she established four years ago to assist children in Africa who have been labeled as witches by their communities. In January of last year, she and her husband, David Emmanuel Umem, created an orphanage in their home. The life of the young boy whose photograph went viral after he was abandoned on the streets of Nigeria because he was suspected of being a witch has undoubtedly changed. It was taken in January 2016 and has since become famous, showing charity worker Anja Ringren Lovin crouching down to give the critically emaciated toddler water, which she had previously refused. The young kid who was given the name Hope has recovered from his horrific upbringing and is now prospering. Despite the fact that his exact age is unclear, physicians believe he's between the ages of six and seven, which means he might have been as young as three years old when he was abandoned on the city streets. When we found Hope, he was in a terrible state, said Anja, the founder of the nonprofit organization Land of Hope. He was in a critical state for the first two weeks of his hospitalization, 
since he was malnourished and suffering from a number of ailments. We weren't sure if he was going to make it or not. His life has been completely transformed by the workers at the organization over the course of four years, as they've shown him unconditional love, care, and a good education. Hope is in excellent health and enjoys attending school, Anja said. He's quite intelligent, and his greatest interest is art and the ability to be creative. He has exceptional artistic ability, and many of his works have even been sold, he says. We like to refer to him as our little Picasso. Neither Hope nor the organization have ever met his parents, and they've been unable to locate any of his other family members. Although he has had a difficult start in life, the young child is able to gaze over his viral photo and crack a smile every now and then. According to Anja, who also serves as an ambassador for the Universal Peace Federation International, he will frequently point at it and smile as if he's pleased. However, I'm well aware that it's not about pride. Children are born with the ability to forgive their parents and other people. Children are born with no preconceived notions about anything. When children are taught what to think rather than how to think, we as a society fail to function properly. Do we teach Hope to despise his parents for abandoning him, accusing him of being a witch, and abandoning him on the street to die? Of course not. That's not the case. A lack of structural education, extreme poverty, religious fanaticism, and corruption are all factors that contribute to superstition. No society can grow if its people are denied access to fundamental human rights like education, health care, and social protection, says the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. The charge of witchcraft is sometimes made in response to calamities like death or disease in the family, agricultural failures, employment difficulties, or infertility. Children are then used as scapegoats and labeled as witches in some societies. Members of their village are then likely to treat them as outsiders as a result of their situation. The children Anja and her team have saved total more than 300, and she's now caring for 76 youngsters in the largest children's center in West Africa, according to her website. Girls as young as nine years old have been tormented, sexually molested, and even buried alive before escaping their heinous destinies, according to the report. Education is the most powerful investment a society can make, and it's the most effective weapon against ignorance, she continued. In order to address a problem, human engagement and communication are required, not a word of condemnation. We're really conscientious in our work. We must assist the peasants and influence their way of thinking. Through advocacy activities in rural areas, we educate and enlighten the villagers. She claims that taking the risky move of moving to Nigeria six years ago transformed her life permanently. She penned the following. On the 20th of March, 2013, I embarked on a journey to Nigeria for the first time. On this day in 2006, it will have been exactly six years since that event. My life was completely transformed six years ago, and today is also the International Day of Happiness, which takes place on March 20th. It's a match made in heaven. Six years ago today, I was happier than I'd ever been because I met the love of my life, David Emmanuel Umamand and together we were able to rescue the lives of a large number of children. When I met David for the first time, he was extremely annoying since the children adored him and would always choose him over me when it came to choosing between us. He would come up to me while I was playing with the children, and when they spotted Uncle David, they would completely ignore me and go back to their games. David was already quite involved in politics at the time of the interview. His ambition was to work as a politician. However, when he was a teenager, he began to become involved in issues related to children's rights and human rights. He was just 16 years old when he began to put his own life in danger in order to save innocent youngsters who had been shunned by their community. As a result, he chose to pursue a career as an attorney in order to amend the laws, to make the world a better place as our mission. David was someone I admired greatly. He was and continues to be fearless in the face of adversity. That's something I'm confident in saying. When it comes to pursuing justice, he has no qualms. I recall the first time I saw David in a state of extreme rage. He's well known for being a thinker who remains mute. Even in the most dangerous situations, he maintains his composure. As a result, I was taken aback when he erupted in rage. After being raped and infected with HIV, a very young girl was taken to the hospital. The girl was rejected care by the social workers in the area, and David was enraged by the injustice and stupidity displayed by the social workers. Ultimately, it was David's perseverance and participation that allowed for the girl's rescue. That was the day I realized I was head over heels in love with David, to see him in a bad mood. 
I recall David calling me a couple of days after we first met. He inquired as to whether or not I enjoyed roses. I replied yes, but it was six years ago today that I was still wondering if I would receive any roses. Despite the fact that I've said it numerous times before, I'll continue to say it till the day I die, David is a kind and generous man who tolerates others, a patriot of our time to be sure. Many thousands of abandoned children have had their tears dried by him, and they now have a better future. He strives for justice and human rights on a daily basis. He's already had a significant impact on his community by providing assistance to the kids and widows in need. He is a man who possesses an unusual and distinct personality, a brilliant philanthropist who one day will rise to the position of Nigeria's leader. Take note of what I'm about to say. I was the first one to say it. One day David will ascend to the position of president of Nigeria. Is David a model of perfection? There would be no chai. This man can drive me insane. He's as stubborn as our son, and even when I'm hysterical, he'll remain cool and continue to provoke me. I'm betting they won't make it, they predicted, but take a look at where we are now. We're still together, and things are still going well. I've had this traditional Nigerian outfit since David gave it to me more than six years ago. The day will remain etched in my memory forever. I was unable to walk. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.